Do you have a Toyota Prius that needs an inverter? Well, guess what? It is not that hard to replace, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. That's a bolt to a here, guys, and welcome to the channel. Today we have a 2012 Toyota Prius that needs an inverter, had a P3004 high voltage power resource, cleared the code, checked the 12 volt battery, everything was good, it would not start, sold additional time to go into the inverter and test it, and found that the inverter had failed. So I'm gonna show you how to replace that. Now, before you go and mess around with hybrid systems, you're supposed to wear high voltage protective gloves. I do not wear them. I confirm that there is no power on the hot wires going to the inverter. However, you should wear them. So hit the like button, hit subscribe button, and hit the bell so you get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. And it really helps the channel grow so I can continue to bring you these great videos. Let's get started. All right, now we're on a 2012 uh, Toyota Prius. It says, uh, check hybrid system. Can't see it in this phone here. So 16 pin DLC, North America. Let's search this up. We're going to say it does not have radar cruise. A lot of times these scan tools, uh, GMs and things like that, they ask you a whole, that has a whole bunch of different options. And it really doesn't matter uh, most of the time as long as you're not dealing with that system. So here we are. We got the hybrid computer. ABS. So be nice. Give us a di diagnostic plan to pull up all the modules. Give us the ability to clear all the module, all the module codes. And again, this is a Toyota, so we'll look at it a little bit different. Here we are. We got CAN two up here, and then we got CAN one. Scroll down here, and we got the K line. So really nice that you have this ability to look at the topology of the computer. So now let's go to diagnostic plan. So we got uh, some codes here. So anyways, so just another, uh, just showing another vehicle with this uh, scan tool, the Phoenix Light 3. So the first step that you wanna do is disconnect your high voltage battery. You're gonna pull the lever to the left and then flip it around and take it out. And then that's how you put it back on. The next thing you're going to do is disconnect your 12 volt battery. The easiest thing to do is disconnect the bolt to the rear of the car with the ground strap and then just secure it out of the way. Next thing you need is a grip mat tray from Toolbox Widget. If you go to toolboxwidget.com and use code nuts and bolts with tone, you get 10% off. And this is to hold your bolts. Next thing we need to do is disconnect the wiring harness that comes around the back of the inverter and goes around to the front. This little black little securing tray we're taking out right there. It's got a couple bolts and a couple clips that hold it in place. Now we need to disconnect the wiring harness from the inverter. Now the way you're going to do this is there's a little lock tab you need to depress. It's a little tricky because there's not a lot of room in there. Then once you get that depressed, there's a lever on the harness that you're going to flip to the side. And once you do that, it unlocks the harness out of the inverter. Now, the harness is not going to pull all the way out of the way because it's still connected down below. So now we need to take off that little plastic cover. It's a few plastic clips. And there's three bolts with a bracket on the front. Now we need to take off this cover that goes over the top of the inverter that covers up all of the high voltage wires. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to test the two wires for the main harness. And what you're looking for is zero volts. A little hard to see there. I had the camera out of, out of view, but you can see it right here that it only has millivolts of voltage, meaning that it's safe to disconnect the main connector that goes into the inverter from the high voltage battery. That is the main harness right there. Now I'll use a bungee cord to just secure that out of the way, just so I'm not fighting it. There's a bracket down here with two tens that secure the harness for those other two connectors 
uh, those other two wiring harnesses that go in and there's three bolts per connect uh, per wiring harness so six on the inside and then there's two per harness on the outside that secure the connector to the inverter we also need to disconnect the wiring harness that goes from the inverter to the ac compressor now one of the things you're not noticing here is i'm using a sunex tools magnetic uh nut setter uh set and i got the 10 millimeter on there and it's magnetic so i don't drop the bolts down into the inverter or out of the inverter next up i'm going to go ahead and just suck the coolant out of the reservoir really what you need to do is just take off the under shield from the car the plastic undercover and drain the inverter because all the coolant is going to drain out there's two coolant hoses that connect to the inverter one on the driver's side and one on the passenger side. That's the one I'm disconnecting now. Basically, there's a little latch that you flip up that locks the hose onto the inverter. And then you're gonna take a screwdriver and just pop it off. And there's an O-ring in there. So you're gonna just lube up the fitting when you slide your hose back on. Next thing to disconnect is the other hose that I was talking about, which is on the driver's side. Now that hose has a little lever. It's a green lever that you flip out and, oh, well, the harness is fighting me. So bungee cords are your friends. Get a pack at Harbor Freight. Keep them handy. So from there, I'm going to lift that little green lever out and then slide the hose off. And when I lift the hose up, you'll see the little green lever that I'm talking about on the hose. It's right there that hose that flipped up. That's the lever that you have to pull out. Now there's the last thing to disconnect is there's this little, on the driver's side rear of the inverter, there's this little black plastic. It looks like a little box. And basically the top flips up. It's got two little, uh, two little tabs you have to depress. You depress those tabs and you can lift the tab up. When you do that, it will expose the, 12, the 10 millimeter for the 12 volt battery. So there's one lead coming in for the 12 volt battery and you have to disconnect that and it's just a 10 milli. But man, let me tell you, this little plastic cover, that fought me, that and the wiring harness clip for, uh, for the inverter just fought me like crazy. So once you get that out, then we can disconnect the 12 volt uh, wire, the 12 volt cable going into the inverter. And then we are set to unbolt the inverter and get the inverter out. It's still a little tricky to get it off. It did not want to let go. And now it's off. And so now there's three 10 millis around the perimeter. There's one on each side and one at the rear. Once we undo those, the inverter can come out. So once you get your inverter ready to go in, you want to lube up your two uh, your two hose connections, one on each side. Then you're just going to finagle all the harnesses out of the way and drop it down. Now, the one thing I didn't show you is in the front corner on the driver's side, right below the headlamp, is an inverter water pump. It is a good idea to replace that while your inverter is out. For one, because it's it can cause your inverter to fail, and two, because you have to take the inverter out to, it's easier to replace it with the inverter out. I actually forgot I was replacing it and I put the inverter all back in, all the way completely and realized that the water pump was underneath the inverter. And so then I had to, I pulled the inverter back out to replace that water pump. And so here we put those three bolts in. Once your inverter lines up, you got your three bolts all lined up, bolt it down. Then we want to connect that 12 volt battery cable connection and then you're going to slide your hose connections on make sure they're up all the way and clip the clip then you want to connect your wiring harness at the front of the inverter now we're going to go ahead and start inserting the big cables into the inverter basically they're all going to slide in and those little tabs on top are going to line up on the outside. Now, don't forget your bracket down below for those two harnesses that are on the driver's side. 
Once you've got all your cables inserted into your inverter, make sure that you have your SunX Tools 10 milli magnetic nut setter and get all your bolts and you're going to get the bolts started. You're just going to start every single bolt because everything has to line up. So you're going to do that, go around for the main cable, the AC cable, and both of the cables that are on the driver's side. Then you're going to come back and you're going to start all of your bolts that secure the connectors to the inverter on the outside. There's going to be two per harness. So eight total counting the AC. Once you get those, then you can go ahead and tighten down all your internal bolts and then tighten down all of your external bolts. And then your all of your high voltage cables are all connected to your inverter. Then you got to put this little plastic bracket in. It's going to be uh, a couple bolts and clips that clip it in. Going to go ahead and get that in and then clip your harness along the back. Then you're going to tighten that down. Now you're going to get your little cover that covers the all the high voltage cables over the inverter. And you're going to run all your screws around on the outside. Now that locks in place, so all your bolt holes should be lined up unless you bent it, taking it out. So you should be able to just tighten each one all the way around. Make sure that's completely secure. And then what I like to do is just go around one more time, just, just snap them one more time to make sure that they're all tight. Then you're going to grab your bracket that goes on the front of the inverter. And you're going to hook that up. And there's also a ground on the driver's side rear of the inverter that I disconnected that I didn't show you. It's connected to a bracket. I just unbolted the bracket. Next up, you need to fill the inverter system. So you're going to do that with coolant. You're going to fill it through your uh, inverter reservoir right there. Now, then you're going to need a bi-directional scan tool to go in and turn on your inverter water pump. Basically, you want to do this a few times and your coolant will go down and then run the water pump. Your coolant will go down and you'll notice that your coolant, your, your inverter water pump might be a little noisy at first. And then when it quiets down, you know, you've purged all the air out of it. If you don't have a bi-directional scan tool, you can just start the car. And while it's running, the coolant will purge and it will push the air out. After watching this video, replacing an inverter in a Prius, you will find is not that difficult. Or hey, you might watch this video and go, you know what, that is not for me. I don't want to touch those orange cables. But anyways, drop a comment down below and let me know if this is your first time ever messing with a hybrid system and, uh, and how it went. I'll see you guys next time.